Good afternoon. Thank you for coming again for Friendship Moments with Friendship Baptist Church in Killen, Alabama. I really appreciate you being here with me today. I want to talk to you today about how does salvation come. Last week we talked about what salvation is. Let's start with a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for once again bringing us together to study your word and to learn from your word, to have our mind restored by your word and renewed by your word. We thank you, Father, that you give us the living word, Jesus Christ, and your written word that brings those words of life to us. Father, as we go through these uh, scriptures today, Lord, I ask you that you just quicken our hearts, open us up, make us teachable, Lord. Make us willing to accept what we hear from you and help us to hear very clearly, Lord. And anyone who is lost or backslidden or just needs a quick pick-me-up or a reminder of who they are in you, Lord, will heed and respond positively. We thank you for this opportunity to share Jesus with others. In Christ's name, amen. Jesus, the Son of Man and the Son of God. Jesus was the Son of Man through Mary, the Son of God through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he was 100% both. Yep. We can't figure that out, but it doesn't matter. We just believe it. John 3, 14 through 18, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through, through him would be saved. He who believes in Jesus is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There's only one way to heaven, no matter how you've been taught, no matter what you think, there's only one way. Acts 2, 12, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. John 14, 5, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And Matthew 7, 21 tells us not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Works can't save you. Ephesians 4, 8 through 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Galatians 2, 16, we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Titus 3, 5, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. How does salvation come? Well, in Leviticus 17, 11, we are told emphatically, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Your blood carries oxygen to every cell of your body and removes the carbon dioxide. Without it, you would die. Your blood carries the nutrition that your, bodies need, your body needs to every cell of your body and carries away the waste. There is no life without blood. And I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. So God set up the blood sacrifice as atonement. For it is the blood by reason of the life that is in it that makes atonement. Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. The blood of Jesus was perfect. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 16. It is a trustworthy statement, <clears throat> excuse me, deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I, Paul, am foremost of all. Yet for this reason I, Paul, found mercy, so that in me as the foremost 
Jesus Christ might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. How can I be saved? Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Acts 2.21 says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Acts 16.30-31, he said, and this is a jailer that had Paul in jail. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. So what happens next after I accept salvation? John 1.12 But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. So everyone in the world is not a child of God. Even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. So you are a totally new creation. The old man, the old spirit, the old sin nature died, and God gave you a new spirit. You are a new creation. Hebrews 7.25, Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Jesus is interceding for his children daily with the Father. Romans 8.38-39, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So no one can take you away from him. Ephesians 1.13 In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you are sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. His Holy Spirit dwells inside the believer. And after that, well, after you accept him, and after you realize you're a child of God, a new creation, and you're set for all eternity, we go to Romans 12, 1. I exhort you, therefore, brethren, through the compassions of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. He died for us. We live for him. John 15, 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. We can do nothing without him. Hebrews ten nineteen to 25 Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, that's Jesus. Let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see, the day drawing near. Now this sums up in we pray and that's just talking to God. That's just having a conversation with him. It doesn't have to be formal and you don't have to use these and thous. Just talking to him, pouring out your heart, telling him your hurts, your problems, your, your concerns and your love and your praise and your thanksgiving. So don't let the word prayer scare you. You read his word, and as you read, you listen. You look for him in his word. You listen to what he's saying through his word. And then fellowshipping with other more mature believers and learning through them. So what is this, the day drawing near? That's Jesus' return to earth. 
He will come again the second time. Revelation 1-7 says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is to be. He's coming back. But that discussion, it'll have to wait until another time. That is, unless he calls the believers home to be with him in what we call the rapture before that happens. And then I won't be here. And I pray you won't be here either. Blessings.